Hi, everyone. Welcome to the monthly free group coaching call for our highest work. It's great to see some of you here live with me. Um, let's see, I see Carolyn, Laura, Mary, Elka, Sharon, Melanie, and Mandy thus far. So wonderful to see you all here. And those who are live here, I always encourage you to chat in the chat. If you're watching this as a replay, I would love for you to show up at one of our live calls in the future. Uh, for the time being, I am planning to do these on a monthly basis or so. And during these calls, uh, I will be bringing on uh, participants who are here, and I'll have them you know, rephrase their question, or, or if they don't have it in front of them, I can always um, repeat the question that I have here written. And then I'll share my thoughts and insights. We'll do some back and forth, uh, as would be helpful. And I'm, I'm looking for questions, or I will be, I'll be reframing the questions in a way that I think will be helpful for everyone who's watching this, or for most of the people who are watching this. And the first, and uh, when I bring on someone, I'll also encourage them to introduce themselves. Uh, the order today will go with uh, Laura's questions first, and then we'll have um, uh, Carolyn come on, and then Mary, and then Sharon, and then more questions as we have time. And the uh, format for introductions, and this is just for everyone to always remember and practice, is who is your ideal client? What is the problem you help them solve or goal you help them achieve? Uh, share with us any kind of credibility indicators uh, for your service, um, for you to providing your service. Fourth is any kind of quick case study or transformation or what clients say about you. And five is what sets you apart from others who provide something similar. So uh, as an example, I will actually share with you what I am working on in terms of my own elevator speech. And uh, you can... Uh, I would in fact love your feedback. And in fact, here's the thing. When you're hearing someone share their elevator speech, uh, I would love for you, those of you who are live, to be chatting in our chat, uh, letting us know what you are hearing. Um, what are you hearing that you probably will remember? In other words, what's resonating with you from what they're saying? Uh, and also, does anything need clarification? Um, this is a supportive group. We're here to practice with each other. And so these kinds of notes will be really useful later. Um, and uh, you can just chat that into the chat. And so here, here it is. I'm George Cow. I am a speaker on the topics of conscious marketing and authentic business. And I'm also, and I've spoken on hundreds of webinars, telesummits, and virtual conferences over the years. I am also a coach who specializes in helping transformational service providers, such as life coaches, holistic healers, spiritual counselors. I help them stabilize their income, expand their visibility online, and experience freedom and joy in their business. I have seven years of experience doing this full-time, and I'm honored to have served over a thousand students and clients in my programs. And if you, are, if you and I are aligned in values and the timing is right, I look forward to serving you as well. Uh, there are two things that uh, my clients say set me apart from other business coaches. One is that I, I love to integrate values and you might even say virtues into, into business, especially sincerity, generosity, and caring. And I inspire my clients and audience to do the same. And secondly, uh, I, er, I, for five years, uh, for the first five years of my business, I earned almost all of my money from, from selling my trainings and information products. And I've made a change in the past two years. Now I've chosen to give away all of my knowledge, training to benefit as many people as possible. And now I earn a full-time income mostly from just doing one-to-one -one coaching. And I found it to be much more fulfilling and a simple business model that actually, interestingly, gives me more uh, true freedom and fulfillment. And this also means you all can get all my trainings and tips and tools for free. Uh, so anyway, that's an example of, a, of an elevator speech. Uh, I hope that was, it was about two minutes long. That's uh, concise enough. And um, if you'd like, you can provide any notes for me in the chat. Uh, what did you hear that you'll likely remember what resonated with you and, and uh, what, um, what needs some clarification in your, in your, uh, yeah, from your perspective? Yes, and... Uh, 
Great, thank you. I see, uh, I see a, a nice note there from, from Sharon already. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring on uh, some of the participants to ask their question and I'll share insights and we'll have some back and forth that will hopefully enlighten everyone in terms of authentic business, conscious marketing. And the first person I'm happy to bring on is Laura. Uh, Laura, just give me a moment here and here you are. Hi, Laura. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Good to have you here. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. I must apologize. I don't have my uh questions ready do you oh have I, I have them here so if you like I can just uh, I can okay. share them yeah but uh, Laura before I share my question would you like to do a little introduction of yourself yes I'm just gonna dive in because this is Practice. fairly new yes to me, this coaching experience I'm, I'm actually primarily for 30 years I've been a, an artist okay and, and also uh, I'm sorry just to have you pause uh, everyone who's listening Listen for what is resonating with you from what Laura is saying or what you're likely to remember and any kind of words or phrases, just feel free to chat that into our chat and uh, this will be helpful for Laura and anything for help for everyone as well later. So, all right, Laura, when you're ready. Thank you, George. Thank you sure. so much. Any, any time, interrupt me. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to read from my mission statement, my vision statement. Um, which is sort of the elevator speech, I, I think. Okay. Um, I'm a creativity coach. I help women release their inner critic and pursue their creative passion. I help women move from fear of judgment, lack of confidence, stifling self-doubt, and depression to realize their creative dream. Through various breathing, meditation, and visualization techniques, women learn to release self-doubt so that they can pursue their heart's desire. May it be art, gardening, music, dance, cooking, growing vegetables, making soap or soup. Women many times are thwarted by fear of failure. I am honored to help women, men are welcome, break free of limiting beliefs with heartfelt support to find the root cause of fear. I help uncover gently a path to confidence, relaxation, and self-acceptance. Uh, I am a professional artisan exercise teacher and meditation practice practitioner. Combining these life experiences, I help women find their true authentic voices. Wonderful. That's great. Thank you. Um, so let's just take a moment and chat in there. And chat, what did you hear from Laura that you're probably going to remember? And um, yeah, any any kind of words or phrases that stood out for you and I'm going to post mine as well there. <clears throat> and by the way, the, the chat, um, the chat uh, transcript will be available later as part of the replay notes. So uh, this will be helpful uh, hopefully for everyone as well. All right. So while you all are, are um, posting anything you'd like in there. Um, oh, and also anything you, you would love Laura to clarify from her elevator speech. Um, I think one thing, uh, one thing that I think could be, could make your elevator speech even better is any kind of more on, uh, you did some credibility indicators there, uh, but it'd be nice to hear some numbers, like number of years you've been practicing mm -hmm. certain techniques, um, why you decided to go into this is because maybe friends and family told you that, oh my gosh, you're so good at this or so good at that or, um, was there a particular uh, person you helped that uh, really touched you and made you want to to do this professionally? You know? So, and thank you everyone for for chatting, uh, uh, Carolyn and Melanie, Mary, Sharon, Mandy. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, so all right, so uh, um, let's see. Your question, Laura, was basically the question was how do you know if your service is worth launching? You have your, you call your service a creativity coaching, and you've mentioned that you've spoken to a couple of coaches who said that, who confirmed that this is a viable coaching service to offer. Um, and you also mentioned that you, you uh, really like the work of Ken Robinson and Brene Brown. Uh, they're both 
very popular TED speakers and uh, do creativity uh, or personal development work of, of, of different kinds. Um, so here's my, here's my thoughts on um, whether creativity coaching or really any service is worth launching. The first question I have is the timeline that you, uh, you have for making money. And I don't know if you want to share, uh, share any, any part of that uh, or, or not. That's totally up to you. Um, but the sooner your timeline for needing to make money from this, the more you need to structure your service mm -hmm. to meet a current spending pattern mm -hmm. that people have. Right. Uh, because a lot of coaches, a lot of transformational service providers are on the cutting edge of <laughs> human evolution, really. And so being on the cutting edge means that their service isn't always, isn't usually in the mainstream. However, if they can analogize or compare their service to something that is mainstream where people are already spending money. So for example, is creativity coaching an alternative to psychotherapy for some people? Maybe it is. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's an alternative to you know, some, some other type of therapy that people are already paying for. Or maybe it's an alternative to going on, um, uh, I don't know, um, uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blanking on this, but you see what I mean? It's like, what is it an alternative to that people are already spending money? And, and the, the, the more clearly you can say what that is like, okay, there's a group of people in society, they're, they're spending money on this and that's fine and good. That's a good, psychotherapy is important and it's a good service, but for certain people who are spending money on psychotherapy, they actually would be better off spending money with someone like me because the psychotherapist doesn't help these particular issues as well as, or as quickly uh, as I can, or maybe with as much heart or with as much um, focus on mindfulness or you know, visualization techniques. So you see how it's not that you are a replacement for all psychotherapists, but you are a good alternative for certain people dealing with certain situations would actually benefit from you more. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did anything come to you uh, regarding that? Well, yes, um, there is a creativity coaching certification and okay. um, I have explored that and that may be on my horizon at some point. And um, however, I'm not sure, you know, quite yeah. yet. Yeah. I think that I have experience, I have life experience and, and life coaching may be an alternative to as well as sure. psychotherapy possibly. Exactly. Um, and, and, and I have yet really to hone in on a very strategic uh, way of presenting myself specifically to each person that mm -hmm. I encounter. Although I kind of feel like I want to be more organic and spontaneous. So it's not as if I would want to have some absolutely have worksheets and sure. Yeah. And that type of thing. I, I, I like, I would like to work more closely just to get into the root, into the okay. sort of the essence of what, pe why, why women feel blocked by, mm -hmm. by not being creative. And my experience from selling my work is that women don't feel they have self-worth or they're good enough to even try it. And then they have the inner critic and the outer critic. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, you said earlier that there's a coaching or there's a creativity coaching certification. Now I do want to, um, say a word of caution, okay. which is that many, many people, businesses are trying to sell certifications for this skill or for that skill. And, the certification programs, I'm sure, have really nice-looking websites that look very professional. They may even have had thousands of people graduate from their certification programs. And what they don't tell you is that many of those thousands, maybe most of those thousands, are not able to make a living doing that thing. Um, mm -hmm. Health coaching certification is one of those examples. Mm -hmm. I can't 
tell you how many people have come, come through my marketing programs who got this, this certification, uh, not just health, but all kinds of certifications in coaching. And they, they find that the market, it's still too fringe on the market for the market to say, oh yeah, of course I would hire someone like that. So uh, let me give you a few, uh, few words of advice here is you can also think about who, um, where else are your ideal clients spending money that where they would uh, maybe get a referral to someone like you. So you mentioned life coaching. So it may be that you go and talk with life coaches and get to know them, build a friendship with them. And so that they, they will they'll remember you as, oh yeah, Laura is the one that I should refer to when my clients, especially who are women, have a certain block around creativity. Does that make sense? So so yes. what I'm saying is the shorter your time frame for needing to make money, the more you need to dip into current spending, dip your ladle into the river of current spending, which mm -hmm. is already there rather than creating a whole new river. The less mm -hmm. urgent you are in making money. So if someone has five years to say, I've got five years or 10 years, I don't really need to make money. I'm just doing this as a passion. And if it makes money, great. Then they can literally create their own river. They'll, they'll create their own online visibility. They'll create their platform. They'll create, they'll create demand for them as a brand. And of course, people do that. And some people do that fairly quickly, but they tend to be very aggressive and very salesy. But uh, for those of us who don't want to be aggressive and salesy, uh, it takes a little bit longer to do it in a more authentic way because it's, it's more of a, the way of nature. Um, yes. And so, uh, so, so okay. Um, so what I would, the, the homework I would give you is to talk with two types of people. One type is prospective referral partners. People like, like I mentioned, maybe life coaches, maybe psychotherapists, maybe, um, re, you know, relationship coaches, uh, and, and talk with them to say, how can, um, how could your clients benefit from a service like mine. I mean, you wouldn't approach a conversation directly from there, but to get to know them and to get to know how you could support each other and to share with them. Okay, so this is what I do. Do you imagine any of your clients would be perfect for something like this? And some of them might say no, but some of them will say, oh yes, actually I can think of someone. And so talk with prospective referral partners, number one. Number two is talk with prospective clients. And this could be friends already on Facebook. And you could post something on Facebook to say, hey, I'm looking to interview people who are, you know, especially women who have these challenges and would like to overcome them or would like to achieve these goals. We'd love to uh, interview you, to get to know you better and to help you however I can. This is a free conversation. It's an hour long conversation. And then during the conversation, you spend half the time really getting to know them, asking open-ended questions so that you can get to know the context of their life and where their challenges sit. And then in the final half hour, you, do, you, exp you give them a sample of your coaching, uh, making suggestions, uh, asking them questions to help them clarify things. And as you do this, you'll, you'll get to see, oh, which types of people are more receptive to what I do? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So that would be, that'd be great. Um, uh, great. And thank you uh, to those of you who are chatting there. That's, that's helpful. Okay, so uh, Laura, your second question was about Facebook and you wanted to say, how do you post in a group that's relevant to what you do or what's, can you say more about what you mean by that? Well, you had a short video with, with Buddy in the background, which yeah. I really enjoy these videos with, your, your, with Buddy in the background. Yeah. Um, you were talking about how to contact uh, someone, you, you find a group, uh, right. yeah, and so I, was, I know it's on one of the videos, but I couldn't find the title. Oh, okay, okay, great. I will uh, be sure to put that video in the, in the notes for, the, for, for this replay. Um, I think the video was something like on, contact online group managers, something like that, but I'll, I'll put a link to it, and okay, if, uh, if I don't, please do remind me. Um, but yeah, so there, there's, your, there's your answer right there. So, Laura, thank you so much for asking thank your questions you. and being here. And it's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, I hope that was helpful for everyone here. Um, 
let's go on to the next person, Carolyn, and then uh, Mary will uh, will be will be coming after Carolyn. So, hello, Carolyn. Hey. Good to have you. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this for us. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Um, as a matter of introduction, mm -hmm. um, yes. I am a college access coach. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. I um, work with young people who are transitioning from high school to college, or at least in the preparatory stages of doing that to find uh, a place to study uh, where they will thrive and where they can um, really be educated, actualized young people when they graduate from, high, from, um, from college. In the past, when I've worked with young people, it's, it's been uh, to place them in college and help them to find financial aid and scholarships. But now I'm really being more focused on helping them to find a place where they will thrive and where they will uh, evolve and grow into the um, creative, contributing adults that they were meant to be. And... So I thoroughly enjoy my work. I've worked with thousands of young people over the years in all kinds of demographics. And what I've learned is that they, along with their families, all have similar goals. Even when, um, you know, the parents may have been well-educated or not, everyone still wants the same for their child. And so I am um, very committed to helping them do that. Wonderful, thank you. That's great. And uh, those of you who are here live, please feel free to to chat um, to chat in the chat. Any notes you heard that, uh, or any words or phrases you heard, or ideas you heard from Carolyn that you're likely to remember or resonated with you, or any questions that came up for you. Um, 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 one question was from Sharon. Sharon, is, uh, Carolyn, yeah. how do you find, you find your clients now? Your clients now? Because I've worked in schools for so long, um, some of them come that way. I also run a summer program college um, for college-bound young people, college preparatory program, and some come from there. I've written a book, um, a guide for parents and students on on college planning and. And uh, so some people read it and then they contact me. At present, I'm working on um, recreating a website that expresses more clearly what I want to do and how I think I can serve. And so, um, and as I said, I'm sort of restructuring my approach to this whole college admissions process. I'm seeing it not merely as you know, answering your, your desire to get into a good college and, and to be able to pay for it, but helping you find um, the right place for you mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you are going to be nurtured and where you will really learn and graduate with more than a degree, but a true education. And so I think all of this has been prompted um, by something I've recently discovered, the, the high number of young people who are suffering from depression in college and that like one out of every three is on some sort of antidepressant wow. and that wow. was shocking to me in addition to the fact that about 40 percent of american students don't even graduate when they do go and so we're losing a lot of talent we're losing um a, a lot of people who could make really wonderful contributions to our society but they're not having access to the right kind of education so I want to help them find that because I believe if you're in your right place, you're certainly going to be happier. Yeah. And yeah. you will be more productive. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Um, oh, Carolyn, I, I've muted you just temporarily because I was hearing feedback from, uh, from the microphone there. So um, I'm, you're, the question that, uh, this is all very helpful background, by the way, and the question that you had asked was about reaching your ideal clients. How do you reach more of them, uh, especially with this new work? It's, you're not just preparing them for college anymore, but you're preparing them to be creative adults after college and to put them in the right, land them in the right situation in college, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, I'm gonna speak to that a bit and please feel free to raise your hand if you wanna 
clarify anything or or anything. And there's already been lots of comments in in the chat that uh, may be helpful for you. So that's wonderful to see. Thank you all for for doing that. So in terms of reaching ideal clients, um, the first thought that came to me was, who are the referral sources, whether they are individuals or organizations, that get questions? Actually, let me, let me uh, start with this. What are the top 10 questions that your ideal client, the student, or actually even the parents, right? I imagine the decision makers are probably the parents, although sometimes it may be the students. What are the top 10 questions that they are asking that you would be answering or helping them sort through in your service? Top 10 questions. And that's the first step. The second step then is where, to whom are they asking these top 10 questions right now? Where can you imagine they're, whom are they going to, to ask such questions? Or where are they going to ask such questions? So maybe it's high school guidance counselors, right? Maybe it's pastors at church. Maybe it's their fa marriage family therapist um, or, you know. Uh, and so if those come to mind, let's say high school counselors, pastors, and therapists, then the question is, how can you, what can you do to get in front of or to talk with more guidance counselors, pastors, therapists, right? And so one example would be, um, creating a webinar that you would be specifically inviting high school guidance counselors to, or creating a webinar where you've been specifically inviting youth pastors to, you know, and if you target that webinar to say, all right, this is a webinar for high school guidance counselors. If you know of any high school guidance counselors, please invite them to this they can literally change the lives of their students by watching this webinar. And of course, the, the marketing for the webinar would be talking about some of those statistics. I mean, amazing statistics that you've uncovered that are just, we're losing a generation of people, you know, essentially, um, to, you know, depression and to lack of employment afterwards, after college, et cetera. So, so if that, does that make sense, Caroline? Just to, yeah, okay is to ask those questions and then to approach the people whom they're probably asking the questions right now. Um, okay. And I'm seeing some other comments in, uh, in there in the chat. So thank you for to Mandy and Sharon and Melanie for, uh, for and Mary for doing the comments in there. Um, okay. And then the second, the second, uh, idea that came to mind when I saw your question was um, to be more visible online, to post more often on certain, in certain places where your ideal clients, well, I guess the parents perhaps uh, would be, would be surfing. And so one thought to me that came to me was LinkedIn. I don't know uh, how much of a presence you have on LinkedIn, but if you could, up, I have a free course on how to update your LinkedIn profile, how to optimize your LinkedIn presence. So if, uh, if someone would remind me, I will be sure to post a link to that course uh, in the notes of the video as well. Uh, there, it comes with a mind map where all the ideas are, and then it comes with a bunch of short videos to show you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Once you optimize your LinkedIn profile, I would then encourage you to start writing some blog posts. So LinkedIn now allows blog posts directly on your LinkedIn profile. And there are lots and lots of professionals, executives on, um, on LinkedIn. And I imagine with professionals and executives, they want their kids to be happy and successful. And so your writings would be particularly welcome there, Carolyn. And the blog posts don't have to be long. They can just simply be you know, imagine like a, a page or two, uh, but it's sort of like you're, 
if you do it on a more frequent basis, you will become known and thought of as, oh, the person to send my kids to, you know, kind of thing. Um, and also, you could, uh, in your, whenever you make a blog post, in the bio section, you should mention that you're available for speaking and that you're available for writing guest articles. And that was my, my third point that I thought was brainstorm where you could write guest articles. Uh, so blogs where parent, successful executive parents read, um, magazines, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And if you could write about this dire issue, right, that you are, your work helps to solve, uh, and what you do to help them solve it, that'd be great. So, um, oh, and then uh, let's see here. Thank you, Laura, um, Mandy, Sharon, and Mary for their comments there. So, uh, Carolyn, anything else you want to say about this before we complete this uh, question? Um, the, the other question I had had more to do with... Um, I'm going to do these things that you mentioned, by the way. I mean, they, they really do make a lot of sense, and I, it would help me to be more visible. And that may answer this other question about building that list, um, because it's, it, it does seem, though, that from your, your perspective, this list-building whole activity is, is sort of, you know not something that we need to focus on, but focus on getting the information out there and the people then are attracted to yeah. that way because of the quality of the information you have been giving. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so then the question is whether the list building is, is that important? And the list building, just to let everyone know, um, we're talking about building an email subscriber list, an email newsletter list, right? Um, uh -huh. Oh, Caroline, did you have something to say? No. Okay. Who, me? No, I just wanted to know if, I mean, how do, how do we start this online process when we don't have a list? Okay, great, great. Um, okay, so list building was all the rage, or has been all the rage, I would say, for the last 15 years, you know, building an email subscriber list. I, I did that quite successfully in the first couple of years of my business. And now I've really shifted my focus to guess what? Seeing everywhere I write as my list. So I think a lot of marketing people are really myopic in seeing only their email subscribers as their list. And I get it. Of course, we all have to read email. So email is very powerful for communicating with our people. However, if you start to be consistent and frequent on LinkedIn, for example, and people start reading your articles consistently, guess what? That is another list of yours. That's part of your list in the more larger holistic sense. Same thing on Facebook. If you start posting there regularly and people, people are regular readers of your Facebook postings, that is also your list, you might say. So I would encourage you, Carolyn, to, to, to do that. Now, it is also important to have a website where you allow people to sign up for your email newsletter so they can get, for example, something monthly about these issues that you're talking about. So I think that is important. Uh, and, and in your articles, in the bio section, you probably should say, if you'd like to get a, a, um, a regular update on these important issues and the tips for thriving uh, the tips for you to thrive or your, for your college kids to thrive, be sure to go here and sign up for the email newsletter. Then, you know, then it's, uh, that's a good idea, right? So that's how you start to build a list. But really, your list is already existing whenever you have a LinkedIn profile, Facebook profile, or when you guest write for different places. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah. All right. So um, let's go to the next person. I've got Mary, and then Sharon will come after Mary, and then we'll see if there are any other questions. All right. So um, let me find Mary here. Hi, Mary. Hi, George. Hi, everybody. Here. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when you're ready, please share with us an introduction, and then we'll go to your question. Oh, 
Okay, well, first I want to say it's very exciting for me to have Carolyn here because this is the first time somebody is, uh, has been in any of these things that is in a field remotely close to what I do. So, yay, I'm really excited about that. Um, I provide a complimentary service to what she does. Um, I, do, um, I do standardized test preparation. I have a very, very narrow uh, niche, a very well-described niche. Right now it's even narrower than ever because I used to do ACT and SAT prep, but there's a lot going on with the SAT right now. These are the two big college admissions tests that we have in this in the United States, and there's a lot of changes going on. So mostly all I'm really doing now is ACT prep, and that's the exam that students will take when they when they are applying to a college. It's part of their uh, the application process. There's much more to it than just their test scores, obviously, their grades, their personalities, their activities, and everything. And that's kind of what what Carolyn brings into it. When and she works with students. I focus just on those test test scores and uh, and and the, and taking those tests. And so. Um my ideal clients are, are high school students, mostly high school juniors. I have a smattering of sophomores. And then usually in the fall, like for September, I'll have a bunch of seniors that I'll be working with this summer to get them ready for the, the their last go around for the ACT in the fall before they start applying to schools. What they come to me for uh, is generally um, they, um, they took the test. It didn't go quite the way they wanted it to. Uh, they didn't get a score that they thought reflected their abilities and their academic performance, and they want to get that score. They want to get a score more in line with what they think they can do. Sometimes they're at the low end, and then they are feeling maybe a little lost or a little depressed or concerned. Sometimes they already got a really high score, and they just want to get a few more points so they can up the ante and get into an even better college. Okay, so these are all good things, and these aren't bad goals, but I really like the whole idea of thinking, well, you know, when you're looking at these, at your qualifications as a student, uh, why? Uh, why just look at just a few numbers? I think about go more deeply into it and and look at you know not just oh well you know I've got people that say well I want to go to Michigan State why? Well it's the Spartans you know great you know but why you know so um, so I, I just love the idea of a college a college admission person helping kids to decide. Um, you know, what, where they would best fit. And I like to have testing kind of be a part of that. A lot of times people think, well, it's just about the numbers. It's just about getting a score up. No, it's not. Uh, I form, I work one-to-one -one with students. I don't teach big classes. It's just one-to-one. -one. And um, I, am, I feel that our relationship is so much more than just me helping them with some subjects that they can get more numbers on. Uh, I like to think that I'm a mentor, a coach, a friend, a supporter, a fan, uh, just a good adult role model who knows a lot about education and the academics and who's kind of a, can, can be a, a little bit of a, 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 of a guiding light to them in more than just, well, study this and study that and you'll get a better score. So I think that makes me really very, very different than a lot of uh, test prep people who are just focusing in on get these points and then go away. Uh, I have a ton of repeat business. I've, there's more than 30 families for whom I've worked for two or three of their uh, of the children in succession. So I think those are the things that really set me apart. I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, I don't need any more clients. Uh, I have lots and it's pretty much been through word of mouth. Uh, it's taken me 10 years to get to this point. Um, but um, but it's mostly through word of mouth and providing the very, very, very best service that I can. And I think uh, helping to educate parents as to what they what they need and what they look for is is going to be so important as, as well as as well as students. So what I but the reason that I came on this call that the question that I wanted to uh, to present was as um, I know I'm kind of talking fast because I'm tired and if I talk so off, I'll sleep. But um, <laughs> It's true. I climbed the sleeping bear sand dunes today. If you know what that is, look it up. Okay. Um, anyway, um, I think that things have really grown in my business. And in the last year, they've grown a lot. I worked with George a year ago. I can't, I can't believe it's been a year. But I was in his coaching program a year ago, and it was very successful for me. Uh, and I think I have kind of raised the bar a little bit as, as to you know, what I offer, the programs I offer, the kind of people that come to me. But with that comes increasing expectation. If I'm going to say, well, I have a bigger program and I charge more money for it and I'm higher profile, well, then expectations are going to be high. And at some point, I've got to kind of be able to say, well, um, you know, here's what I can do for you. Um, here's what you can expect to get from me. Here's what you need to do. Here's what the student needs to do to, um, to make sure that we, that we get there. I want to be able to have an honest conversation 
because I can't promise anybody any numbers or any score. People have ideas. Oh, my kid is brilliant. Maybe maybe she's really not that brilliant. Maybe she's an average, nice, smart kid, but she gets good grades and everybody thinks their kid is tops. And so not everybody is going to get in the 30s on this test. The perfect score is a 36. So how do I have this conversation where I don't bring anybody down or say, well, I don't, I don't really think your kid's going to be able to do that. You know, no, I don't want to do that. But I also don't want to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 10 points more, it's no problem. So that's kind of, kind of, you know, kind of what I was thinking of. How do I talk about expectations? How do I talk about my expectations for them? There's for me to be honest and, and not promise something I can't give, but it yet by the same token, not, you know, not downplay it either because it's very powerful. So enough yeah. out of me. What do you think? Ah, awesome. Great, great question. Yes. So, this is a question for all of us who have clients or prospective clients who dream big. Mm -hmm. um, and dream big. I like yeah, it. I, same thing. I, when I get people applying to my program, I ask them to, to share an imaginary success story. And many of them are like, you know, may, maybe they're, you know, the, many of them are like multiplying their income by two to 10 times. And, you know, they suddenly have, their, their life has suddenly changed over six months and it's, just, it's like, wow, like if I could do that, <laughs> you know, I would be, you know, I would, I would be on Oprah. Right? Um, now the thing is the, the, the point is, which Mary is, as you mentioned is you can, you can, you, you do a great service. You provide great service compared to maybe many other people like you, but Truly, people change because they bring to the table some assets that they already have and that they work hard. And combined with your guidance, they, you could create miracles. But it's sort of like you're a multiplier, right? You're a mm -hmm. multiplier of what they bring. Right. If they bring zero and you multiply 100, that's still zero. Exactly. But if they bring 10 and you multiply it by 5, that's 50. If they bring 2 and you multiply it by 5, that's 10. And so... Um, I, um, what I would suggest is in your, on your website, how often, especially on the, on the sales page where, where they're getting excited and getting ready to either sign up or, or call, call you, how often do you mention that? Well, I mean, this is one example that you are a multiplier, whatever the students bring at their innate talent and their, uh, diligence, you multiply that through your guidance and experience by many times or by, by several times what they would have been able to achieve alone. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's a nice, right? But oh, go ahead. You, you had something? No, no, I, I like that. And, and I like the idea of, you know, yeah, I want them to dream big, and, and, but I do want them to see um, that, that I can multiply, that I'm, yeah, I'm kind of like a little bit of a mirror, but sort of a magnifying mirror, you know, in, yes. in a certain way, because, because I can show them or help them to, bring, you know, just to, to increase or multiply, as you said, but I can't, put something there that isn't there it's it's difficult to say this without insulting people so the idea of multiplier i like yeah now i i i, I don't recommend saying I, I can't put something there that isn't there oh i wouldn't say that okay, <laughs> okay. no no i'm saying that to you okay, no, no 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 yeah. okay yeah but yeah i i would i would uh also well let me ask you this question do you currently offer any, what is the qualifying period or what is the qualifying process you have for them? So for example, for me, I have a qualifying period in where if, of course, they have to apply to my program and once they apply, they have a half hour conversation that's exploratory and during that conversation, I'm, I'm, in, I'm interviewing them as much as they're interviewing me. I'm really trying to gauge, okay, is this person do they have what it takes? Uh, do they, are they going to be receptive to my suggestions? And if that, if they pass that test, then the other, the next qualifier is that I don't ask for payment until after the first official coaching session. If that goes well, then I'll say, great, let's keep going and ask for it. But what about you? Um, what kind of qualification do you have right now? Well, I have long conversations um, with parents, usually. Occasionally, I'll be contacted directly by a student, but I still need to talk to the parent, obviously. And I'll have very long conversations. And of course, the moms and the dads um, are, you know, they know their child and they've got all those facts and figures and ideas. And, and so I can get a lot from, uh, from okay. speaking with a parent and I can usually tell if it's going to be a good fit based on that. Mostly it is. I don't generally get too many people where I think, mm. but um, in fact, almost never. 
But um, the other thing is that I do offer um, the first two sessions that they're, they're welcome to come in for the first two sessions. I do ask them to pay, all right? They have to pay half up front, but they can evaluate the program. And if they're not completely satisfied after the first two sessions, <clears throat> then they, I'll refund their money. And wow. nobody has ever asked me for that yeah. in the past. And I hope they never will. But if they do, I will do it. Um, but that does also serve as a qualifier for me. I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say, well, right, you know, exactly. I'm creating you. But I could if, if after two sessions I felt okay. that this wasn't going anywhere and this was just not yeah. a good thing, I would do probably you, say that. Yeah. Do, um, do you have them apply before they even have three conversations with you? There's no formal application process. No, okay. I, I, I don't know if you've tried that in the past, but especially given the the situation, I mean, the context of your, you know, you're, you're serving students, applications are very, you know, they, they they should be getting used to that anyway. So I would encourage you to at least to have a simple application before they get to have free conversations with you, because your time is valuable. And during the application, they should they should put at least some n numbers. To it, so you can get a sense of what they already bring to the table. Mm, yeah, that would streamline things a lot if I just had something that said, you know, tell me what you, you know, what your son or daughter's yeah, prior EPA results were, et cetera. Um, yeah. Now, I do kind of have a really good pre-qualifier uh, that that is that you know I do get my clients um, f uh, from ref mostly f well. F totally from referrals. I've had very few people that come to me directly from my website. So these mm -hmm. are friends of people I've already worked with and they refer um, yeah. me to those people. And usually they don't just broadcast my name. They'll, they'll select a friend that right. they're close to that they know that person. So when I get a referral, I almost always know that there is something to back that up already just because uh -huh. I know who the person is who referred them to me. Right. So, so that, you know, it's not just a person coming to me out of the blue. It's it, there's, there's, yeah, there's some, there, you have a qualification just from the referral. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> but I like the idea of having a, like a contact form type thing with, yeah. um, you know, with just a, what were your scores? Tell me a little bit. So that it doesn't have to be a super long phone conversation. Right. Um, yeah. That'll save you time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am trying really hard right now to streamline all my processes and get, get you know, have a, an online scheduler and an online intake and then this and then that. And it's just taking me a lot of time and work, but I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward with it. So, Excellent. and I think, you know, Georgia, that that's not my stressful yeah, Well, no, you're, you're making progress. Uh, recently, I um, switched online schedulers. For those of you who, well, I think eventually, hopefully all of you will be using online schedulers. I like to use Acuity Scheduling now. So you that's the know. one I just started with. I yes. love that. Isn't it? I love that program. I'm so happy it does everything I wanted to do. Yeah, it, it does. It, it's really amazing. So I'm really happy. And they have a great customer service. So oh, anyway, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, so Mary, thank you so much for your question. Really appreciate yeah. you being here and all of your comments and, and things like that. So oh, already. Thanks for listening, you. everybody. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so um, next, I'm going to bring on Sharon. And I'm going to find her here. And... Hello, Sharon. Good to good to meet you finally. <laughs> yes, your voice. Well, I've heard your voice. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, so Sharon, uh, you had a couple of questions, but before that, would you like to introduce yourself a bit? Sure, I'll I'll be fairly brief. I work with uh, I, I'm transitioning from doing a lot of free work, basically, and ongoing mentoring. From I was a, an educator for a number of years, and uh, music and uh, music teacher and tutor. But I work primarily with um, my, my ideal clients to primary people who have a lot of interest and talents, who, um, who have a hard time really honing them in. They get distracted by one thing or another, and they don't want to waste time mm. in their lives. They have kind of go into that, you know, that someday basket I'll get to. Yeah. They'll do that. And they have a feeling that they're spinning wheels, not getting traction, and they don't want to leave anything on the table when they get to the end of their life. Uh, the other clients who come are people who are hiding and playing small. They are um, hiding between, they, they want to find their voice and align their values with their work and so on. I was a teacher for a long time. I, my background is highly eclectic from Ageless Wisdom and Esoteric Psychology and Astrology to sound therapy to uh, music improv with, I've, I'm trained with music for people. I'm a sort of, I'm a music improv educator. So I help people 
from classically trained to paper trained to people who are terribly terrified um, make music without having things um, without having music in front of them. And I use a number of modes, uh, modalities, depending, uh, depending on the client and what the situation is. Mm, great. Thank you. Thank you. So um, your question, one of your question was about the anatomy of an effective sales conversation. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, let me, let me speak to this a bit. And then if you want to say anything more about it, well, actually, let me, let me first, uh, do you want to say a bit, give us some context of what you mean by that? The, um, yeah, it's when, when you're either talking, uh, when I'm, um, it can be talking to somebody that you've uh, met at a networking meeting and mm. are wanting to help some way. It could be getting on the phone so that you're not spending, you know, an hour. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just interested. I'm looking at different ways people do those sales conversations. Ah. So I'm, I'm just interested really in your, Okay. And how you figured out. I've done them and I do them. I'm just always looking for, sure. you know, maybe yeah. there's another way. Okay. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. So the way I do them is it's only half an hour. And one of the reasons I can keep it to just half an hour is because I have them apply to the program before. But even, even if I don't have them apply, I think I could still do a half hour. And let me tell you what I do in that half hour is I'm primarily doing um, three things. One is I am making sure I understand their issues. And so uh, particularly in the first, well, at the very beginning, I will say, hey, you know, great to meet you. So in this next half hour, I'm here to help you as much as I can. So, so let's start by telling me what uh, you kind of sought me out for in the first place, what kind of got you interested in hearing about my services and what I do. Uh, of course, this would be appropriate if you're talking with a with a prospective client. If you're just meeting someone at a networking and you're having a long conversation, uh, you would you could say this. You could say, "Hey, I'd love to know more about what, what, where you're. If you're having any challenges in this particular area, and the area that you would say is what you do." Um, so, I for the first really 15 minutes, I focus on understanding their issues, so listening to them, asking them questions, and then say for the next few minutes, maybe up until minute 20 or so, I'll be trying to frame what I'm, what I heard them say. It's like, am I correct to say that you're dealing with this, you're dealing with that. And then I'll spend another five minutes or so giving them a suggestion to say, have you, tr have you considered trying this? Or the, f the, f the thought that comes to mind is that this would be really helpful. Or maybe I'll ask them a question to help them clarify for themselves what uh, steps they should be taking forward or how they should be thinking about something. And so finally, the last five minutes of the 30 minutes is I would ask them, so, uh, and at least I leave three minutes at the very end for this. So do you have any questions about how I provide my services or how I work? So then that's, that invites them to say, oh yes, oh yes, um, how much do you charge or what is your packages like? Uh, or how to, So uh, that's very basic. Um, uh, the so that's how I do it. Uh, the way that is being taught out there a lot by a lot of my previous joint venture partners is during a conversation you move them, you have them describe their pain. You kind of move them from pain island to pleasure island with the boat being your services or your expertise. So you kind of have them describe. Tell me about your struggles. You know all the stuff you're dealing with. Okay, great. Am I understanding that you're dealing with this? Okay, tell me about where you want to go or what is your dream in, in this area of your life? Oh, I would love to achieve this. I'd love to see, see this. I'd love to experience this. Great. Now, do you understand that there is a gap between these two? And the gap that I see is you need to understand this. You need to develop these skills. You need to create these projects or whatever. And that's exactly what I help people, my clients do. And so that's kind of like the traditional sales conversation, pain, pleasure, and, and then the boat in between. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I have a version of that. I don't really do that very much. I just kind of, I mainly try to understand the issues. Oh, I said that there were three things that I do. I make sure I understand the issues and say it back to them and see if I'm getting them. If, if there is a, if there is an understanding that I have with them, if I, if I'm not understanding them, it's probably not a good fit. Right. Second right. Uh, thing I really try to do is to see if they're open to my suggestions. 
I think that's really important mm -hmm. because if a prospective client is rejecting your suggestions right in the exploratory call, You're not coachable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the third thing I want to I want to know is if they have any questions or if they have any understanding even of my services and what I do. So. Is that helpful? Why did you make the change? Yeah, I'm just, why did you make the change? What was your thinking about making? Because you know, you've gone through, yeah. watch the shift. But was there yeah. something that? I, I think the main thing is I, I felt like I was manipulating them. <laughs> you know, yeah. I just it didn't feel um, authentic to me because I felt like I, I I felt like I knew what I was doing. Whereas now I feel like I'm genuinely trying to help them. I'm trying to understand them, and I'm trying to see if they're open to my suggestions, and then to see if they want to work with me and that's very simple and kind of straightforward so that's that's the main reason um, oh and then your other question was about how do I track and manage my calls and follow-ups and I'm assuming you mean like with prospective clients yeah so if you've you've met some you've talked to people and you say you're out and meet somebody uh, I'm at an event meet somebody I've got the card I've got a contact you know the, the card. <laughs> you've got the card it goes into your CRM of some sort but how, you know, some have the, a CRM that gets that stuff pinged back or their virtual assistant comes back and tells them, or you put it into a, you know, the box okay. where all business cards go to die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, great, great question. Yeah. I, I, I bet all of us have uh, yeah, a box of our business cards <laughs> are, are length. Okay. Um, uh, Oh, and actually, I see in the chat that there is a, is a follow-up question on our previous topic from, from Mary is how, if you think someone isn't a good fit, how do you tell them? I actually am pretty straightforward and I say, hey, you know what, um, from this, I really feel like um, uh, you're at this particular stage and I'm not the person to help you at this particular stage. So I, I really make it about their, their point in the journey. Or maybe they are really ch trying to reach this goal and I'm not the best person to help them reach that goal. And I'll say, hey, you know, I'm, let me think about someone who would be even better for you. And I'll get back to you about, about that, that person and that referral. And so, um, okay, so about tracking calls and follow-ups of prospective clients. I uh, used to have some fancy system. I was looking into CRMs, like you said. CRM, for those of you who don't know, is a customer relationship management database. So it's like a place where you input their information and it'll automatically remind you to call this person or that. I found that if it's not simple, I'm not going to use it. <laughs> so I found that I had to come up with the very simplest method possible. That's number one. And the other part I realized was that following up with someone is really labor intensive if I'm, if I'm following up with one person one to one, especially over the months or over the years. And I find that when they're ready to work with me, uh, if they're on my email list, if they're, if they're getting my regular monthly uh, emails or if they're connected to me via social media and I'm posting there regularly so they kind of see me every now and then, when they're ready to work with me, they will contact me. Or, or if they see one of my emails saying, okay, I'm open for more clients, they'll contact me. If I follow up with them, um, it almost never works out uh, because hmm. maybe two reasons. One is that the timing isn't right for them. So that's why they're not approaching me yet. I'm approaching them. Secondly is I might come across as being, you know, desperate or needing clients and that doesn't come across right. And so here's what I do now. I use Google. Um, I use Google contacts. Okay, it's, it's free. Um, it's powerful. I actually connect it with Google contacts is, is connected with Google plus. So what I do is if someone is interested in working with me or possibly interested, um, I have two circles. Once Google Plus has something called circles of contacts, and it's yeah. all free for, for you all to, to use. And you, th that person, here's a great thing that person doesn't have to be actually, let me say this if you use Gmail, if you use Gmail, then it's easy to use Google Plus circles because whenever you see an email uh, in Gmail on the right hand side, you can add that person you to a Google add. Plus circle. Yeah, I've so I, on Google Plus. Yeah, so I'll add them if they say they're interested in my program. I'll add them to a circle called interested in program. If they're a prospective client who didn't say that, but I'd like to maybe follow up with them at some point, I actually add them to a circle called fans because I'll just occasionally email my fans through Google Plus. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So it's so very, very simple. So, uh, uh, and then yeah. when I, when I'm focused on enrollment twice a year, 
I will go to the Google Plus circle that's as interested in program and I will individually email the people who are there. Now, if I do not hear back from someone that I emailed before, I will remove them from that interested in program circle and I'll just put them in the fan circle. So that every two weeks or so, I make a Google Plus posting and I check that box that says, also send email to. In fact, you know what, since I'm here on the screen with you all, I will show you how to do that uh, since I can share my screen. So if you'll just give me a moment, um, I will do that here. Okay, so in Google Plus, right, when I'm writing something and uh, every two weeks, I will, I will share one of my, my most popular videos and I will, I will share it with the public and I'll share it with fans. And you see this checkbox that says also send email to fans? I will check that and then I will click share. And what that does is that sends an email through Google Plus to them. So it's not, it's not super intrusive. It kind of goes into their social media section of their email, and, but, but it still comes as an email. So they'll kind of, they'll keep, I'll, I, I keep myself on top of mind for them. So I think once every two weeks is probably the maximum to, 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 to use this feature. I think once a month is good you know, good, good, uh, once a month, once every two months is definitely a good minimum to be using this checkbox because I have several hundred people, I have almost 500 people in that. Now you may only have even 20 or 30, but still using this checkbox at the maximum once every two weeks is a good idea. And make sure you send something that's, that you've already seen is popular. So I make a social media posting generally three to five times a week. And so, and so if I email my fans through this Google Plus once every two weeks, that means I have something between six to, to 10 postings to choose from. Like what is most popular, what I've seen people are liking on Facebook right. or whatever, that's what I'll send to them. And so that's how I keep in touch with the people uh, so that when they're ready, they'll reach out to me. Does that make sense? That's brilliant. It's that's just very simple. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's a great way to use Google Plus because yeah. it's a, a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of a uh, unusual kind of setup. You really have to know, kind of play around with that. That's great. I yeah. like that idea. Yeah. So cool. wonderful. Um, so thanks, Sharon, for your question, and uh, great to Thank have you, you here Joy. as always. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me just see. Are there any final quick questions anyone would like to ask? Uh, oh. What's the um, art behind you? Yes. Uh, I'd like <laughs> to say that this is my where my home is <laughs> but I, I'll say that this is where this is where we're all going this is heaven <laughs> uh, this is this is just this is just a poster actually if you can see this is literally a poster I got it from art.com after yeah. after shipping and handling it was less than sixty dollars for this you know, uh -huh. poster so I recommend checking art.com and seeing if there's anything you, you all like there and you can put it in the back um, oh uh, Carolyn says do you have to use Gmail uh, to use Google Plus circles, um, uh, let me—that's a really good question. No, you don't. And the the way you would do it, if you don't have Gmail, you could still use Google Contacts. And I will show you it. The the link is um, uh, contacts.google.com. And when you go there, you can import your email addresses from whatever email software you're using. You can import that into Google Contacts. And then in Google Contacts, you can then add people to your, G, your, your Google Plus circles. Then you can use Google Plus circles to email them once every couple of weeks. Yeah. So, all right. So I have uh, gone over <laughs> some. And so I'm going to end the call now. It's been great. Oh, you know what? Before I end the call, one thing I'd love to do, if you would like, is to take a group photo. And the way I do that is very simple. I just, I'm going to count from three to zero. And those of you who have your cameras turned off, uh, if you would like to join the group photo, I'd love for you to just uh, click the camera icon on the bottom of the video. You'll see at the bottom of the video, uh, just give me a second here. And it's good to see you all. Um, at the bottom of the video, there is a uh, there are some things. Okay, I think everyone's here. Okay, great. So I'm going to count from three, two, one, zero. And when I say that, you can make any expression you want. Funny, just a smile, anything you like. And then just hold it for two seconds. And then later I'll take a screenshot in, during the replay and I'll just uh, I'll add that as our group photo. So ready? Three, two, one, zero. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Appreciate you.
for, for being here, uh, for seeing, wonderful to see your beautiful faces. And I'm gonna unmute everyone now uh, so that you can all uh, say hello and goodbye to each other just to hear everyone's voices. And here we go. Hello. Hi. Hello, Hi. everyone. Thank you. Have, a good, Thank have you. a good night. Thank you, Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you in the group. Bye. <laughs> Next time. Bye.